Welcome to Boulder, Colorado. We have an exciting matchup available here. This is Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships. It's a beautiful day, and our matchup right now in pool play is Iowa versus Humboldt State. An exciting matchup. Maya Ziv, what do we expect to see out of Iowa with our Next Gen Tour Bus keys to victory? Well, I think Iowa's key here is that they have actually already won their pool, so they need to get the rest of their roster out on the field, get their rookies and younger players some high-level experience. First of all, there's a little bit of wind picking up in this game. They need to use that to their advantage. They're a North Central team. They do well in the wind, and they're going to throw a variety of zones. They also, like we said, need to use all of their roster, get off the field as quick as they can as well to save their legs for quarters tomorrow. And they just need to come in with confidence. That's going to help them get off the field quickly. On the other hand, for Humboldt, they've been 0-3 on this weekend. They need to play their game, and their game is the deep game. They need to have their throwers taking those deep shots. They need to trust their receivers to bring them down, and they need to give their starters their rest when they can in order to maintain through the rest of the weekend. They play a slightly tight rotation with a few people playing the majority of the points. Those girls are probably quite tired at this point in the weekend, and they need to get some rest too. Also joined by Mario O'Brien, I'm Brian Jones, bringing you all the coverage here today. The wind has been swirling a bit. We don't expect it to play too much of a role, even though Iowa is certainly used to the north central winds. It is a beautiful day. We have seen lots of exciting games so far here on Next Gen Network. Coverage of the 2012 College Championships. Yeah, I think the wind might also work to the uh, advantage of Humboldt State as well if they are going downwind. Those deep shots are just going to be that much more available. Beautiful shot of our yours truly, Brian Jones again here with Mario O'Brien, Maya Ziv, bringing you all the coverage. Humboldt State getting set to start out on offense. Iowa polling in the red, Humboldt State in the white and gold shorts. One minute left till we pull. Maya, there's been some interesting like upsets recently in, in, in the women's division. I, I saw a few underway. just got upset the number one overall seed. What kind of impact does that have either for them or on the whole tournament? Um, I think going into this tournament that a lot of teams were expecting to have those kinds of upsets. There doesn't seem to be really a front runner uh, at nationals this year. And so a team like Texas, who did just beat Fugue, uh, does get the chance to take down a team like Oregon. Additionally, UBC just had a fantastic game against Michigan, beating them 15-14. Um, and so that was another upset there. Uh, both of those pools, we actually thought initially that Pool C would be the only one to go to seed, and now it looks like UBC might have messed that up a little bit for Michigan to take the top spot there. It just is so critical for teams to stay out of pre-quarters. We've already seen teams being affected, getting tired. One less game is going to make all the difference for those teams. And we're ready to go. The poll goes up. Humboldt State coming in on offense. Hyde. Centering the disc, moving it upfield, horizontal stack for Humboldt State. Quick movement here and an overthrow early on. Unfortunate mistake there for Humboldt State. They had great initial spacing, allowing their cutters to make throws turnover downfield. Uh, just an unfortunate oh, turnover. Yeah, that's some of the mistakes that have been plaguing them this weekend. Usually they are incredibly consistent. They were one of the top teams out of the Southwest region, an incredibly competitive region, and here they are at Nationals. A little bit of jitters, perhaps. A lot of these girls haven't been here before, um, and they're just making mistakes, but that's a great opportunity right here for Humboldt. And we'll stay getting it right back. Forcing it up, goal line eyed, looking for the break. Instead, finds a wide open cutter for the score. Humboldt State goes up one to nothing over Iowa. 
It's a good place for Humble to be. They were able to get that disc back and put away a point. They're going to have to keep up this confidence if they're going to win this game. Georgina Tetlow comes down with the score for Humble. Hags one, Saucy Nancy zero. You know, that play was set up by that nice inside out forehand fake. The defender got caught looking at the thrower. She bit hard. The receiver also made a good ra read knowing that the defender was looking at the disc. She turned around, went the other way, created the goal. Excellent fundamentals there from the handler to create that opening. Yeah, we should expect a lot of that from ID. She's one of their, she's probably their top thrower on this team. She's got great deep shots. I talked to her a little bit before this game. She says she's a little bit nervous with the wind, especially going upwind at times. Uh, but she's looking forward to making those smart deep shots. So hopefully we'll see a lot of that from her as well. Humboldt State holding early on in offense. Now we'll get to see Number 20, Christina Iowa's Aiden. offensive line Cole step on the field. Humboldt. Just about the brick mark, center for Iowa. Swing pass to the right side of the field. Big layout. Can't, might, can't quite get the grab, and Humboldt State has an opportunity to break on the second point of the game. Johnston, back to ID. The drop. Hannon with the drop I step in deep for Humboldt Iowa. State, and Iowa trying to capitalize immediately, sending it deep. Just too far for the intended receiver. You know, that was a beautiful throw. The wind just got a piece of it at the very end, just out of the reach of her receiver. Johnston swinging it around. Iowa running a zone, trying to use this wind to their advantage. Heidi. around, finally finding Handler back. Speaking with Iowa coach Michael Lunn before this game, he said he was incredibly excited to try out some of their zones. They're a North Central team. They love this wind. We're going to see a lot of different variations of zone today. This one seems to be really effectively shutting down Humboldt. They're swinging it back and forth pretty well, but they haven't been able to gain much up the field. Johnston now with the disc. Humboldt State not being able to solve anything here, just dink and dunk passes. You no, know, Humboldt State's doing just a little too much horizontal right now, sorry, horizontal passes. They're not even looking downfield when they catch the disc. And also, I'd like to see their dump cuts crash into the cup so they have momentum going forward. You can see that most of the Humboldt offensive players now are all in a small little box, and that's not what you want with zone offense. Zone offense. Your advantage is when you spread out the defense because that's going to create holes everywhere. Okay. Defensively, you want to, you'd like to be playing in a small little box. Seven on seven in a small little box is much easier for the defense. If you spread it out, the advantage goes to the offense. And I think part of that is they rely a lot on ID to make those big plays. And so you'll see the handlers that get swung to on the sideline look right back to her immediately to make something happen. There's a few holes in this cup that they're not taking advantage of. Uh, I'd also like to see some deep shots from Heidi. I think she can get over that cup. Just need to have her cutters go deep for that. You said Heidi keep getting, keeps getting the disc back here, not moving. Finally, Humboldt State finds a little bit of room. Heidi's doing a good job staying available, but losing yards every time. She could just step right into that cup, and the defense would back off as soon as she caught it. Those yards are really an advantage. I mean, that's going to eliminate entire throws if you can get those yards each time. Putting it deep as a receiver. Beautiful hawk for the score, and Humboldt State is up two to nothing. 
That's Humboldt's game right there. Get the dis to ID, have her send it deep. I'm surprised she didn't try it before, but it worked out perfectly for her there. That was, you know, talking to her before the game, saying she wanted to take those smart, deep shots. That's exactly what she did right there. That was a great offensive point for Humboldt. Yeah, as, as, as much as I'm, we may have been critical about their strategy and their setup, what they did execute perfectly was patience. They only threw very, very high percentage throws. And that, even though it was a huck, was a high percentage throw. It's your best thrower. Casual forehand huck on target. And I think one of the mistakes that Iowa made in that point was overthrowing some of their players. This is the fourth game that these teams have had. This is the high Colorado air. Uh, you know, it's easy for throwers to overthrow players at this point. The cutters are pretty tired, and Humboldt was patient enough to wait for the perfect opportunity to take advantage of that deep shot. Iowa's offensive line back on the field. Heidi Halverson on the reception in the end zone for Humboldt State. Sorry about that, Heidi. It took me a minute. Iowa not coming out sharp. And I'm sure that you can attribute that to them knowing that this game means nothing. And the number one seed locked up. It looks like we're going to see some even playing time and some opportunities. Iowa taking a shot early in the possession. Foul call on the play. Coming in on zero. Koig moving it upfield after taking the shot. Foul was called and comes back. Novak. Big grab by Toig. Hammer over to the back corner for the score. Iowa gets on the board. Two to one. Humboldt State leads. That's Chelsea Tuick for you. She is one of Iowa's best players. She's a great receiver. She's also, she plays fearlessly. She's not afraid to take those shots. We don't see too many hammers or upside down throws in the women's 10, game. Chelsea Expect Tuick a lot of those from Tuick. Humboldt State with a two to one, one break lead. Again, we're here in Boulder, Colorado. Brian Jones here with Mario O'Brien and Maya Ziv. And Maya, the, the women's division is crazy. You know, you look at the men's division, I think all four number one seeds in the pools have, have held serve. Now you look at the women's pools, one seed in pool A, Oregon, lost a game. Mm -hmm. the Just now to Texas, actually. The one seed in this pool was Washington lost the game. The one seed in the C pool is two and one. The three seed in that pool is three and oh. And then pool D is equally as crazy. Tufts, the four seed in their pool, is right now winning the pool at three and one. It just shows the parity that there is in, in women's ultimate. Yeah, I, I totally agree, especially this year. Uh, there's just like we said, there isn't one front runner. Any of these teams has a chance at any point. Humboldt State, especially in this game, must be incredibly excited being up on Iowa right now. They're 0-3 so far, but here they're coming out fired up and confident. This game could easily go to Humboldt State if they stay fired up like this. After an offside call, Iowa has to re-pull. ID picking up the disc. Johansson. Up field for ID, finding some separation in that cup. Heidi's going to have some crazy stats this game. If you want to check out stats for this game, you can check it out on leaguevine.com. They're keeping live updates of, of stats, goals, assists, touches, everything. Take a look at Heidi's stat line after this game. She's touching it basically every other. She's throwing their goals. Primetime player. 
That being said, I'd like to see a little bit more out of Natalie Green. She's number four, another big player for Humboldt. Those two work together incredibly efficiently. And so to see Natalie not have too many touches on the disc yet is a little bit surprising. She's working it up that sideline pretty well. Um, so hopefully they work a little bit better together. Even without the zone, ID is touching it every other. Johansson, though, getting some space. Phipps, ID. Catching it close to the ground, it's green. Back to Ivy. Still in the goal line, Humboldt State, now up three to one. Number 20, Kristen Ivy into the end zone. Number 23, MC Hannon on the catch for the Humboldt State score. That's Ivy's third assist of the game already. If they're gonna win, it's gotta be through her, and, and that's that, that's obviously their plan. I think you're right, Maya, that she's gonna need some support. But right now, she's in the zone. Definitely, she's gonna have to dig deep and maintain the whole game. I think she's ready to do that. She's been doing it all season, especially at regionals uh, and their conference championship, where they got first in their conference championship, second in the Southwest. She was a huge player for them all along, and looks like there's no difference here. It's paying off for them in this game. Now, Mario, if you're Iowa at this point, are, are you worried about this score? You've already won the pool. What's your main concern in this game? My main concern, if I'm Iowa, is managing this game appropriately. It's really easy to, when you win the play. pool, to say, okay, we're going to get everyone equal playing time. But you need to be really careful about the mentality that that can create. You need to be smart about the goals that you're setting for the game. You need to make small, manageable goals so that your players can still feel like they're succeeding at something. Because it's, it's going to be really weird for them to know that they won the pool and then have to go into their next game feeling like they just lost and like things weren't clicking. So it's, it's truly on the leadership to make this game still useful and continue the momentum that they have for next game. So I'll be interested to see how they manage the game. The easy, the easy call is, of course, equal playing time but truly they need to make sure that they are able to capitalize and use this game three, to build Eliza their momentum as the they move into the bracket. Dana Demert, number 99, Miner with the with assist for, for Iowa. Iowa, Iowa three, closing the gap to three, within one up, early on in this game. Last round of the day we have for pool play, everything getting tied up here at Nationals. We have pre-quarters after this. I'm sure this, we'll see some exciting matchups. Maya, who, who are you looking for coming out of pre-quarters? I, I think it depends really on this last round. Like we said, there's a bunch of pools that are still sort of in flux. So coming out of pre-quarters into quarters, um, I'm looking forward to see, like we said, the number one seeds in each pool. So I'm, I'm hoping to see some Michigan, some Washington, some Oregon, Iowa, obviously. Um, I'd like to see Wisconsin. Um, they've had a little bit of trouble this weekend. Ohio State has actually been blowing up, so it would be really great for them to get out of pre-quarters. Um, and then also North Carolina. They had a really great game against Michigan yesterday, even though they lost. They're showing that they've got a lot going for them. Shelly Cohen and Lindsey Lang for North Carolina are big players, and it would be exciting to see them make it to quarters. Sarah Timko to pull for Iowa. Iowa getting set here on defense. Centers the ID immediately for Humboldt State and another zone look by Iowa. Going through the zone, Phipps. Going back to Johansson. Looking for ID, ID the big thrower here. And critical so far for Humboldt State success in this game. Zone differing now. The dump swing is working well for Humboldt State. An interesting change up in zone for Iowa. Heidi Phipps. I think we talked about how Heidi isn't afraid to lose yards on those dumps, but 
I think that against a team that is playing a tighter zone, maybe more of their starters, that's not going to work out for them. They are traveling down the field quite efficiently now, but if they had a point like they did in uh, a few points ago, a better team will get those layout Ds and make those throws a lot more difficult. And the defense really isn't doing anything to keep it out of ID's hands. You know, if you're going to run a zone, you've got to take something away. And right now they're allowing ID to just control the disc and control the offense. Turnover for Humboldt State. Iowa getting a chance to get their break back. Seeing a lot of patience here by this Humboldt State team there. Just an unfortunate drop. Yeah, sometimes the numbers game just works. The more passes you throw, eventually there's, there, there might be a turnover. In that case, Humboldt State took about 30 throws just to get their yards and dropped it. Throw away, gives it back to Humboldt State. ID picking it up off the sideline. Trapped against man defense now for Iowa. ID looking for the dump. Cut falls down, defender falls down, green. Up to Idy. Idy dominating here on this offensive possession. IO break caught just outside the end zone. Looking for Idy in isolation, and Idy adds one goal to her three assists. Humboldt State leads four to two. You know, watching that inside out break by Idy really remind me of one of the great break throwers at the club level, and that's Alex Snyder. She plays for Fury. She Humboldt is State absolutely unmarkable for a couple reasons. Two, One, two. she has all the technique. Two, she's tall, which makes it even easier to break. And ID has that same advantage. I could see ID being a great handler at the club level. Speaking of Alex Snyder, she actually coaches Wisconsin Belladonna. Uh, we actually just saw some results. Looks like Wisconsin will actually end up taking fourth in their pool because I Ohio State Dominated a few teams on their way. They're currently set at second. We'll see how these next rounds finish up. Ohio State is currently playing Texas. Because Texas beat Oregon, uh, those three teams are moving on. Um, and we can talk to you guys a little bit more about that after these messages. We'll see if Iowa can stop ID. We'll get, be back in a break. Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships. And we're back here in Boulder. I'm Brian Jones here with Mario Bryan and Maya Ziv. We're here watching Humboldt State take an early 4-2 lead over Iowa. Seems an exciting action so far. ID absolutely dominating for Humboldt State, slashing through the zone there in isolation in the end zone, getting the net last goal for Humboldt. Dominant is the right word when you talk about ID. I don't, I don't think I've seen a player, not a, at least not on the showcase field, Maybe a, a handler at this tournament who's, who's as dominant and as, a, as much of a central focus as ID is for this team. She's obviously the best player on the field right now. Getting set to pole. Seen a lot of zone early on from Iowa, but mostly man defense from Humboldt. Iowa has been not been very patient taking shots deep. On the pole for Humboldt. Pole rolls out of bounds, giving good field position for Humboldt State. Their defense trying to lock down. No, that's a great pull. Got him pinned on the sideline near the end zone. That's about as good as you can ask for. Schrader getting it off the line. Big poach D by Humboldt State. Shifting gears a bit here, Maya. Talking about that first pool, that's that, that crazy pool. Mm -hmm. So currently the standings are Oregon at three and one, Texas at two and one, Ohio State at two and one, Wisconsin two and two, and Sonoma State 0 oh and four. I just heard a rumor that Ohio State, currently the three seed in the pool, mm -hmm. is planning on just throwing their game to Texas so that they can save their energy. That pool, that pool is decided in terms of who's moving on. Ohio State, the th current three seed, has beaten Wisconsin, so they automatically would win the, the tiebreaker mm -hmm. if both teams are two and two. Mm -hmm. So 
An interesting scenario playing out there in, in pool one. We're going to have the one, the four, and the five seed in the pool moving on to the bracket play. Definitely interesting. I think one of the biggest stories there is Sonoma State. Uh, they have, were at the top of the Southwest for the majority of the regular season, faltered a little bit in the postseason, and now to see them going 0-4, they were just right, not ready to play on the, the national stage. A lot of mental errors. Uh, they just aren't a very strong team without Maggie Rudin, who's their star player, sort of like Idy is for Humboldt State, being on. Right now, we see Idy totally on for Humboldt State. If Idy was off, we can imagine that Humboldt would be playing really poorly in this game. Just like Maggie having some problems for Sonoma State, they end up 0-4, giving a chance for Ohio State to move on. If I were Ohio State, I might consider doing the same thing. Just concede that you're going to end up in pre-quarters and rest all your starters and get the legs ready to play that game and win it. Especially difficult for these teams that have that schedule where it goes. Pool, last game of pool play back-to-back -back in the pre-quarters. Seems like a significant advantage for teams playing earlier in the day. Humboldt State, though, moving it up here. Hannon going around for the dump, instead finding Idy. Johansson. Call on the play, stoppage, foul on the mark. <laughs> Costa back, Johansson. Hannon. Looking for ID. Iowa trying to shut things down on ID, but just too fast. And there we have a foul call on the play. Waterbottom coming in the underneath. Looks like a foul called on the D. No contest. Just stays with Humble. Play resumes. Winterbottom looking upfield. Call on the play. Good call. Humboldt's end zone set here, very interesting. You can tell just the way the players are spread out across the field that they are gonna focus on their handlers. You'll notice that the cutters are standing in the back of the end zone and on the sideline. And there's a huge amount of space you can see there on the far side of the field. Play resumes just right near the goal line. Hannon, looking back, finding Johansson. Flip for the score, no. Drop by Adi, her first mistake of the game, really. Putting it deep, Iowa trying to strike. So far, I don't know if Iowa has completed any of those huck attempts. You know, they didn't complete that one, but that's, a, that's an excellent choice with the throw. It's gonna create a situation where Humboldt now has to work the entire length of the field. If, if you complete it, awesome. If you don't complete it, awesome. Still a good situation. The wind is picking up a little bit. It's going to make these upwind points that much harder. I, I think that that was a great decision by Iowa. Humboldt we'll State moving it. ID putting it deep. Miscommunication there. Still a chance. Iowa gets the D. Lisa Miner. Miner with the Take SWAT D. Three, Lisa Miner on that. Miner's been a great player for Iowa all season. She's big on D, she's got great throws. It's great to see her out on the field making these plays now. That's what Iowa needs to stay mentally in this game regardless of the score. Iowa on their own goal line, trying to work it up. This time finding an undercutter. Good succession of gainers. Putting it deep once again, this one. First huck completed, just outside the end zone. Looking for a dump. Foul called on the play. Too much bumping on the mark from Humboldt. Liz Miner, where have you been all my life? <laughs> Huge D. Comes over, gets open. Throws the pretty huck. Dang. Check out this throw. This is a pretty backhand quick release. Booyah. No contest, counts on zero. Sorry, six. It's like an uncontested foul, disc tapped in. Here's a look at the Iowa end zone set. Toig, nice inside, uh, around break, the flick. Back to Toig. 
High release backhand for the score, and Iowa cuts the lead to two. You know, I love that throw. I don't, I don't think it's a, a throw that, that people practice a lot. Most of the time when you practice your backhand, you step with a full pivot and then throw. I would say that backhand throw is almost more common than regular back than the quote unquote regular backhand where you pivot. I like to call it a half pivot backhand where you actually release the disc before your pivot foot hits. Mm -hmm. The goal is not to get out there and throw a fast, accurate pass. It's just get it out quick, throw a floaty one flat out to space and, and let your receiver run onto the disc. Also very useful on around breaks. Just get just beat the mark quickly, put it out to into space. There's no defender there. Accuracy not as important as quickly getting to space. And that was Tuig with that throw there for Iowa. She is a very intelligent player, and she, I think, more than anything skill-wise, her strengths lie in her decision-making. That was a very quick decision she had to make. She just put it out to space, her receiver Sarah ran Tim onto it. That's a great point for Iowa. Iowa finding some success after a little trouble early on. Holding things now up to their defense to generate a turnover. Timko with the pole for Iowa. Starting things off green. Centered from ID. Upfield. It's nice Tetlow. to see ID and Green both in the backfield now. Hopefully they'll be working together a little bit more. I'm like I said before, I'm surprised that Green still hasn't had as many touches as ID on the disc. That's usually their game plan. ID is just on fire though, so it is working out for Humboldt. Moving upfield, ID trying to get an isolation once again. Looking for Green, uh, just out of reach. Incredible effort by Green to go after the forehand right, flick. For that, didn't come up with it, though. Iowa disc. Iowa looking for an option. Going underneath. Timko, another big gainer. Erickson. Back to Tim Coe. Averkamp. Upfield. Iowa being patient now. Definitely adjusted after the first points of hucking. Big fake out. Throw too far out in front. You know, I think the handler there, she knew that she was going to throw to a space, and she, she actually turned and stopped looking at the dump cut and just looked at the space. That's a mistake. Hand-eye coordination is based on the fact that you're always looking at your target. Your hand will do the work. You don't need to look at the space to throw it, especially when it's a short throw. Now, hucks are slightly different. When it's a throw that's that close, the disc's only going to be in the air for maybe less than a second. Just stay locked onto your handler. Throw it. Just hit him right in the chest. No need to lead him. Looking back. Now upfield. Another layout opportunity. Comes up short. I'm both turn. Now that's the second up the line cut this point that the Humboldt hasn't been able to connect on. If I were them, I would rely more on their around breaks at this point. Those throws are not working out for them. This layout is successful and Humboldt State gets the D. Nice D number seven, Georgina Tetlow. Tetlow. Heidi. Now, looking at the line, Green makes an incredible move. Absolutely shredding. Heidi. Back to Green, up the line. These handlers are working well together now. High release to Idy. Johansson. For Idy. Seems like nobody can stop this. Humboldt State, six to three, they lead over Iowa. Heidi is absolutely putting on a handling six, clinic three. right now. We're going to take, take a look at her work here. We're going to see her working the disc, using her face. She throws and goes, beats her defender. The around break happens. She keeps the disc moving. And you can see that she's always thinking about where the next cut is going to be. She's watching the disc sometimes, but always thinking about the space that she's creating with her cut. Sometimes great cutters aren't just fast. They're, they're smart, and they know how to get open. ID is playing great. 
Definitely. Also on the reception there, Georgina Tetlow, she has been an outstanding player for the Hags this year. She actually got that layout D as well. Huge on D. She's ready to hit the ground. She is one of those players that pumps up the Humboldt Hags. Pumps me up watching a play like that. Just perfectly horizontal on that layout. Ooh. Doesn't get much better than that for Humboldt State. Now leading 6-3 to three over Iowa. The tail of the tape here, looking at leaguevine.com, where you can check out all the stats here at Nationals, as well as include your own team and keep track of your own leagues and stats. Leaguevine.com, thanks for supporting us. ID, 46 for 48, completion so far, touching the disc a ton. Johansson, 30 for 32, Green, 16 for 16. Iowa now moving the disc. Hicker now, picking up field. Toeig putting it deep. Iowa turn, Humboldt State disc. Now these are surprising mistakes for Iowa's starters. Toeig is a starter for Iowa, and to see her throw the disc away like that, it's a little bit disappointing. Iowa should be excited to play in this little wind. Not, I mean, I think it's hurting them right now. They're overthrowing their players time and time again. A wide zone here almost gets the D for Iowa. We've seen a couple of different zones from Iowa so far, used to playing in that wind. Moving the disc well. The early zone forced Humboldt State to work it up the field very patiently. Moving back to ID now to dominate. Not allowing the swing, giving everything in the middle of the field. As Mario, as you were saying before, and the cla clashes here would have would have make all the difference, as opposed to dumping swinging it back. And we had saw that attempt there, just a bad drop, unfortunately for Hannon. You know, it was a drop, but it needs to be on the thrower. That that shouldn't be a flick. That's one of the hardest flicks you can throw. Just a little touch flick for two yards. Just reach out with a backhand and just set it in her hands. I was a great attempt. Tuig throws the nonchalant assist. Humboldt Number 10, Chelsea still Chelsea having a 6 to 4 lead. Corner there for Eliza Minor for the Iowa score. It's one of my favorite types of assists, the nonchalant assist. She's like, oh, no big deal. Been here before. Been here before. She's open. I'm going to take care of this. My favorite goes back to the walk off huck. Send it deep. Don't even look at it. No, it's going to be good. Walk off the field. Leave it up there, leave your follow through out there and walk off. It's a good one. Now just to compare what the women's division looks like compared to the open division. There are three out of the four pools have gone perfectly to seed. One, two, three, four, or five. The only one that hasn't gone to seed is Pool A. Oregon sits at the top, 4-0. Minnesota, the two seed, went 3-1 and one, as expected. But a team that I think everyone was hoping would have an impact and make an upset did in fact just do that. Currently sitting at third in the pool is Georgia Tech. If they can pull out a win, that would be the five seed taking the three spot in the pool, moving on to pre-quarters, and I tell you what, Nick Lance is a dynamite handler. You would not want to play against Georgia Tech if you're anybody. Currently right now, down 8-4 to Ohio is Georgia Tech. The magic number for them is actually three. If they lose that game by three or less, they will advance on. But if Ohio maintains their lead, we could see Ohio move on to the pre-quarters there. Yeah, it's an interesting system when it comes down to point differential. Teams that end up with the same record, it goes to the total points they scored compared to the, the points that their opponents scored. And then it also goes down to common games looking, to decide who moves on. Looking deep for Costa. Humboldt State, impressive huck there. Seven to four they lead. And that was Natalie Green on the huck there. That's the kind of play that we're looking for her to make. It's not just ID on this team. Green has those throws. Like Humboldt State's taking the time Green out. has been impressive so far. 
coming up. Idy was running the show early on, and Green has stepped up, like you said, Maya. Humboldt State did not call that timeout. Iowa did. So Iowa has gone ahead and called the timeout here, and, and I think that they're having that talk that we talked about before. Let's take a look inside the huddle. Here, the Iowa coach, you know, focusing on small goals, just like just like we talked about. He's got them focusing on their marks. You could hear the players in the huddle trying to pump each other up. Verbally, I heard it, but looking at their huddle, they their body language didn't tell me that they were pumped up. Having the opportunity to break for half, extending the lead 8-4 would be huge. Take a look at that beautiful scenery. That's an excellent shot there by our, our man Sam Adamson, one of the fine members of the NGN crew. It really is a treat to be out here in, in Boulder. Conditions definitely getting a little windy right now, but extremely beautiful. As if the wind picks up, it will have a huge impact going into the pre-quarter round starting at 5 p.m. today. Here, and turnover big D by Humboldt State, and Heidi picking up the disc. Nice D by number four, Green streaking. Green for Humboldt State. Excellent holster there by Heidi. She had a receiver streaking deep, but she decided to take the easy one. Heidi knocking on the doorstep once again. Overthrown, but Humboldt State is there, gets the catch. Back to Heidi, and quick flip. And it's halftime, Humboldt State is up eight to four. We'll be back in the second half. Thanks for listening to our coverage. This is Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships here in Boulder, Colorado. Number eight, Kathleen Johnston pulls that point in for halftime. Humboldt State Hags eight. Iowa Saucy Nancy four. Back here in Boulder, Colorado for the second half of Humboldt State versus Iowa. I'm Brian Jones here with Mario Bryan and Maya Ziv. Humboldt State has jumped out to a big 8-4 lead. We have a big thanks to our sponsors, though. Today's game is encoded by Elemental Technologies, providing video processing solutions to deliver streaming content to any screen, anytime, anywhere, all at once. Iowa receiving here, trying to get back on track all with the disc. Looking out, Humboldt State playing fiery on defense, coming out with a layout D immediately. That was just excellent commitment by the Humboldt defender to, to deny the underneath easy throw. Moved up field. ID fitting in a tight space. Is there a catch? Foul call on the play. Looks like when this one is going back to ID. Rare mistake on, on that throw. I think it was the right choice. She just needed to put it towards the cone. Her, her offensive player had an advantage over there. Just threw it a little bit too far inside. Rare mistake there from Heidi. Still discussion going, going on. It's like it's going to be a contested foul. The players agreed, and the disc goes back. Out coming in on two. ID, and once again, back to Johansson. Back to ID. ID looking for the around and flip. 
That's just a clinic once again by ID using her fakes to move the defenders and create an easy throw. That's a great layout D for Humboldt too. Something that we've been talking about Humboldt all season is that they are a very aggressive team. We haven't seen them turn it on too much this game, but there was a great example of it right there. They aren't afraid to body up with girls and get their hands on the disc when they need to. That was a great play. You know, one thing going on here in the second half is all of the coaches, not just in this game, are already looking forward to their other matchups that they're going to have either tomorrow or in pre-quarters. Iowa, for example, they already know that they're in quarters. They've won the pool. So they're thinking, how do we get the right result for our team mentality in this game to move in to our quarters matchup tomorrow? Now, across the board in the women's division, all the coaches might not be paying attention as as much to their game. They're actually paying attention to what's going on in the other games because that's going to affect their strategy. For example, a, a team that knows or, or or knows that a team is throwing a game so that they can just play in pre-quarters. If you know that as a coach, that also affects you because you might see them. So you might either try to throw your game or try to win a game so that you can get the matchup that you want in pre-quarters. So a lot of the games going on, it's more than just the win or the loss. It's what's going to happen as a result of the win or the loss and creating the best path for yourself to give yourself an opportunity to win in, at, the, at the most important times of the tournament. Costa getting a big foot block there, like setting up another block. chance for Humboldt State to break. And Idy is on fire, her second assist of the second half. She makes a total of six assists for the game. We need to get her one of those Sky Magazine player of the game, player of the weekend, handler of the century, whatever. She's <laughs> she's on fire. We do have Sky to playmaker shorts available for anybody making a big play here. How about someone who makes a thousand good plays in one game? A thousand yeah, shorts. A thousand pairs of shorts. Shorts Life, for the rest of her life. Lifetime, Free shorts. Lifetime supply of Sky to Sorry, lifetime, <laughs> li li lifetime supply of Sky Playmaker shorts. Gift, Christmas gifts for years. So we, we understand that teams are already looking ahead for their matchups, quarters, possibly for the pool winners and pre-quarters. What are we seeing out of Pool A that could switch things up? Uh, well, we've got some interesting action going on in Pool A. There's in that pool, Oregon, Texas, and Ohio State. Ohio State and Texas are currently facing off right Looks like Ohio State is just letting that game go. Texas was up 9-3 last time we checked. That is going to set Ohio State in pre-quarters against Iowa State. On the other hand, because Texas beat Oregon, that's going to put Oregon in pre-quarters facing Cal. It's a great, smart strategy from Ohio State. Put Oregon in the pre-quarters, a potential future contender. Make them work to get into the quarters. And it's also a good strategy for themselves. No matter what, they know they're in pre-quarters, and that game is going to be immediately after this game. Unless you're going to face someone who you know is a, a tough matchup, I think that's the right call. You'd rather go in fresh to a game, be able to give it your all in an elimination game, rather than take a chance and maybe try to play some points. I, I, I think that's the right call to just rest your players and focus 100% of your effort on the last game of the day, potentially the last important game of your season. Oh, moving up field. High release for the score. Iowa getting on the board in the second half, down 10 to five. That's the second throw um, for Eliza Miner of that type. Um, she, just like Tuig, who also had one, earlier this game. Both of those girls are smart players. They're going to put that small floaty backhand to space, let her defender run on it. Iowa is doing a great job of attacking the front corners of their end zone this game. Yeah, I love that That just flip backhand. You don't need to be, be, take a big wind up on that. Just put your hand up there, all wrist, just flip it out there, keep it flat, and let the receiver run on. Looks like we have a timeout on the field. We'll see if Iowa can battle back. We'll be right back with the action here on Next Gen, Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships.
And we'll ba we're back here in the final pool play matchup here in Boulder, Colorado, 2012 College Championships. We have Humboldt State with a large lead, leading 10 to 5. ID has been the story of the game, absolutely destroying Iowa's zone early on. Kristen ID has had a remarkable game with seven assists so far. Humboldt about to receive here. Iowa trying to recuperate, get a little bit more out of this game, although they are resting their starters in preparation for the games left in this tournament. Iowa advancing on the quarters after winning their pool. Sarah Timko to pull for Iowa. Iowa getting set to pull. This one coming up around the brick mark. Wind has settled down. We were expecting 25 mile an hour winds. It's been rather calm here in Boulder, which is great news for everyone. Some great ultimate. Seen some great games across both divisions. I really love the spacing that I see here from Humboldt. Unfortunate turnover there, but they're doing a great job keeping their cutters who aren't cutting on the sidelines to create a lot of space downfield in the middle. Boom! And Block City. Running up to Costa, looking to strike deep. Will this one sit? No, too far, unfortunately. I think for almost the three quarters double happiness. The block and the assist. Yeah. You know, I like to set rules for my team when I lead. And one of those rules is after you make a block, you should never pick up the disc. Almost never pick up the disc because you're all fired up. You're, n you're not in the state of mind that you should be to make a, an, a good throw. Especially after you make a block, you shouldn't be hucking the disc. It's always better to just reset the disc and then Use your legs. Iowa right behind, almost makes the behind the back catch. Johansson going up the sideline. Looking back now for the dump. Upfield, Green with the goal. Humboldt State leads, builds 11 to five. Humboldt State is definitely in the zone here. Unfortunately for them, it might be too little, too late. They're working really hard and showing off what kind of team they can be, but their 0-3 record, I think, is gonna knock them out of even the pre-quarters at the tournament this weekend. Humboldt State was a surprise team coming out of the Southwest, right, Maya Ziv? Yes, I was actually at Southwest Regionals. I got a chance to see them play there. They took down Davis um, in the game to secure their spot to Nationals. They then went on to beat UCLA, setting UCLA to be the fourth seed out of the Southwest. And then they beat Sonoma State in the 2-3 game. They actually took the second place spot out of the Southwest. They showed amazing play, just like we've seen here today. No fear in taking those deep shots, aggressive defense, and it paid off for them there. Unfortunately, it looked like they couldn't bring that game with them to Boulder on Friday. You know, this, this Humboldt team reminds me of a team in the open division, and that's Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has a truly dynamic handler in Nick Lance, and anytime you have a player like that on the field, you have a chance to win a game because when players like that, especially as a handler, if you play flawlessly, the, def the defense just has no chance. And that's kind of what we're seeing here today. ID is so dominant and controlling the game that, that Iowa just has virtually no chance to, to make a play on any discs. Granted, they are in a situation where they're not putting everything into it. You have to give a lot of credit to these, the star power of a great handler, even on a team that necessarily doesn't have a great program. Sleeth. The disc for Iowa. We'll be an upfield to Erickson. And back for the dump. Lots of people back for Iowa, really giving space downfield. But here's an underthrown disc and a chance. Costa moving it up. Big throw. Wide open in the end zone. Too far. Looked like the receiver almost gave up on that before really running it out. She might have been able to toe the line even. It didn't go that far out of bounds. 
but she just stopped running about halfway down the end zone. Yeah, I don't think the thrower got the, the angle and direction on the throw that she wanted to. Just let her a little bit too far to the cone, needed to get it over to the break side a little bit more. So he starts Iowa. Erickson with a great catch going to the ground. Avery Iowa, Camp. Iowa Cutters very, very deep. Created that space underneath. Fortunate Unfo turnover. Looking upfield for Adi. So dangerous around the end zone once again. Eighth assist of the game, and Humboldt is up 12 to 5. No end in sight of ID's domination of this game. So we have Iowa wrapping up their pool, Maya Ziv. They, they came out of the North Central region. Tell us about how they got here. Uh, Iowa actually had sort of a rocky season. Uh, they did very well at nationals in years past. And then this season, they've been considered sort of second in the North Central after Iowa State. Then at regionals, they broke out. They won first in their region. Iowa State actually ended up taking third. Now, Iowa State has had a really exciting weekend. They had sort of a rocky Friday. They're going to actually end up in pre-quarters already. Iowa's here proving their dominance. Looks like they are doing what they can to peak at the right time. I don't think this game is indicative of how their performance has been all weekend, and they find themselves at the top of their pool and into the quarters. What, is, what are Iowa's chances then moving on forward after quarters in the semis? Who do you see them facing up against, and what are the challenges they're going to they're gonna have? Um, I think Iowa is going to have some really exciting matchups. They are an incredibly strong team, and whatever team that matches up against them, especially if it's windy, is going to have a challenge against the multitude of zones that they work. Um, it looks like Iowa is going to be matching up against either Cal or uh, the winner, uh, the winner of the um, Cal and then Oregon or Ohio State pre-quarters game. At the moment, it'll be Oregon if Ohio State loses, which they are losing. So Oregon or Cal is going to be an interesting matchup for Iowa. I think Oregon probably has the better chance over Cal. Uh, they've got some dynamite players that'll match up with Iowa's top players. And Oregon also has a multitude of zones that they can work with. And I would not want to play against Oregon in the pre-quarters, knowing that they, they lost a game. Lou Burris is going to have his team mentally dialed for those elimination games. 10, and, and you might run into a buzzsaw if you catch Oregon in pre-quarters. They did not want to be there. They were probably expecting to win their pool. Not necessarily unchallenged, but they definitely were expecting to win the pool and go straight to quarters. Definitely. I think they were not expecting especially to lose to Texas. Um, they have been showing better results at tournaments all season long versus Texas. Cal, on the other hand, who won the Southwest, um, is sort of surprised also to see themselves in pre-quarters. I think Oregon will have that game there. Oregon is completely dominant. What Oregon does is they will have up or down games. Cal, on the other hand, has just random inconsistencies within a game. So if Oregon comes out fired up and on, they will definitely capitalize on all of Cal's turnovers. Even one or two breaks, Oregon will take that game. Yeah, Oregon's been a different team this year. Significantly different than the, the team that won the championship a few years ago. And talking to Lou, he says the teams couldn't be more different. Mm -hmm. The 2010 team had just an incredible O-line. You had Shannon McDowell, Jenica Villamore, Claire, uh, Claire Sharman, and those were all just, I mean, those girls are incredible players. They're fast, they're talented, they're skilled. The emphasis this year and the strength of, the, of Fugue has been the defense. They've just absolutely been able to shut down teams and, and generate breaks with the defense. Yeah, I think having Bailey Zanister back for Oregon this tournament is really helping them out as well. She's been out all season with an ACL injury. Finally, she's back. She's ready to play hard, and she's been making great plays for them on both O and D all weekend. She's also a big motivator. She was on every sideline of every game for Oregon this season, and here she is at Nationals on the field with her team. Yeah, Bailey is an, a, just a diehard ultimate fan, player, if you, if you know Bailey, you know that she loves everything about Ultimate. ID looking deep. Tetlow comes down with it. 
Great catch by Tetlow. Wide open in the end zone, and Humboldt State, no looking back, leads 13 to five. Excuse me, 13 to six. After the game, make sure you visit the NGN Facebook page to vote for the Elemental Player of the Game. One voter will receive an Elemental prize pack with two discs, a t-shirt, and an aluminum water bottle. Humboldt State Hags 13. Keeping your water cool. It's been a monumental year for coverage in Ultimate Frisbee, led by the charge by Sky Magazine and Next Gen Network. Maya Ziv and I have been part of the Sky 2012 College Tour. Got to go around to a lot of tournaments. Standard, Stanford Infight was a big one. Mm -hmm. Centex as well on the women's side. That was absolutely amazing. Centex on the men's and then Easterns, of course. Mario and, and I going out there, seeing some great games, great competition. You know, Maya, I'm really interested to hear about Centex, the women's tournament. I've heard, you know, that that... that sort of the aesthetic of that tournament is significantly different because it's just a women's tournament. Are there, are there mm -hmm. specific things that happen that make it more fun, just a better event overall for women, supportive of women's, the women's community? What, what is it about that event that makes it so special? Well, I think primarily to note is uh, usually this group called Without Limits, which is run by Michelle Ng, helps sponsor that tournament. She works really hard to put on a fantastic tournament, great organization. Um, and making sure that everyone has what they need. Without Limits is a group that works to promote women's ultimate in the community, um, help with coaching clinics, that sort of thing. And I think that Centex is the prime example of the work they do. They also have a lot of fun sort of events. They have a barbecue at the end of the day and with the world famous dance off where teams actually get to submit um, dances that they do. They submitted videos ahead of time. They were posted on YouTube and the internet world voted on which teams they wanted to see dance off at Centex. And so I believe this year um, it was Wisconsin Eau Claire who took the win. Uh, very exciting there. That's so. my alma mater, UW Eau Claire. I don't <laughs> think that's the first time that they've been there at least. I don't know if there's finals of the dance off, but I know that uh, my good friend Pat Niles has been their coach mm -hmm. for a number of years. and takes a lot of pride in uh, succeeding like at, at that dance competition. Pat Niles, a good dancer himself. Yeah. Well, uh, I believe it is their second, if not third, win in a row for Wisconsin Eau Claire. So they must have some fantastic dance moves going on there. Pat Niles, the winner of USAU's Dance Choreographer of the Year. <laughs> Iowa. Get him some shorts. Get him some playmaker shorts. Playmaker on the dance floor shorts. <laughs> Sleeve looking upfield, moving the disc for Iowa. Schrader up the line. Hart, and we have a stoppage on the play. Justine Hart with the disc. You know, it's great to see Iowa with a lot of energy on the field at this point. Their sidelines look a little slow to catch up with their players, but the players on the field are working really hard. To me, that shows that they aren't so mentally down. They're practicing what they need in order to get uh, ready for their quarters game. A quick point like that is a great sign that they are still mentally connected to this game. We had Bradley going up the line for Iowa, bringing this to a 13-7 game. And you can really see the Saucy Nancy, Saucy Nancy ladies, they, they have checked out mentally of trying to win this game, and I think that's the right move, but like we were talking about before, you still want to make sure that you don't go in flat to that next game, your quarters game. I think wouldn't be surprised if the Iowa girls got together tonight to sort of just reevaluate where they are, talk about this last game, put it behind them, and then say nothing that happened in the past matters. It's all about what's in front of us. Maybe they'll get here early tomorrow, get a little extra throwing. I've, I saw before the game that they were very fired up. They seemed like a very energetic, fun team, and I think they will be dialed in tomorrow. Be interesting to see. I always, as a coach, would love to have my starters come in for the last two points of a game that didn't matter whether or not we were winning big or we were losing big. Just for if we have another game to prepare for it, I want them to kind of leave that game with a, a little ping of success. That way they can go into the next game on the right foot. 
Yeah, there, there's so many different ways to play it. The bottom line is you need to let your team know what your strategy is. Everyone has to know. Otherwise, if people are confused about what's going on, they're confused about the play calling, they, they lose buy-in to what the goals are and what the overall goal is. And that just points to, to good leadership. Good leaders make the goals and the expectations aware, not only for the game, not only for the tournament, but for each point or each small set of points. Humboldt State working it quickly up the field as they have Adi, Hannon, Johansson. That handling crew has done well with green as well. Counts on zero. Adi has been absolutely dominant. 96% completions on her throws. That's, that's absolutely incredible for anyone in ultimate. 65 for 69. This one though overthrown a bit. Incredibly, 69 touches, nearly 70 touches in this game, and this has been a game with not many points. That's something that, that's twice the amount of touches we might see from some, any given player. That's almost more touches than I get in a whole season as a, <laughs> as a defensive handler. That's, that's fun, man. Playing that position is fun. You're always involved. It's a fun role to play. Just goes to show, if you want to have more fun playing ultimate, get really awesome at throwing. That time is well spent. But then you get none of the glory of catching the disc deep. Hey, man, I'm, I'm happy to throw alley-oops. I'm, I'm happy to play, <laughs> play the Chris Paul if I got a Blake Griffin. Who's your Blake Griffin? I got tons of Blake Griffins. On Rhino, I got Timmy Purston. I got the college freshman of the year, Aaron Hahn. I got Cody Bjorklund, Dylan Freechild. Ooh, that sounds good. I got X, X Callahan winner, Eli Friedman. Speaking of Rhino and Oregon, it looks like we might see Oregon facing off against Cal. Uh, currently, Texas is huddled up. They just cheered. So it looks like they might have taken that game against Ohio State, putting Oregon into the pre-quarters against Cal. So we'll look forward to that game next round. I think that's going to be the game to watch of all the pre-quarters. Anytime you've got the overall number one seed in a pre-quarters game, I wouldn't be surprised to see the sidelines packed for that one. Heidi picking up the disc. Putting it deep for her. Another assist, her 10th of the game. Regular John Stockton out here, dropping dimes. Instead of Blake Griffin, we got Carl Malone. I don't have any Carl Malones on, on my on Rhino. Mostly Blake Griffins. Speaking of the men's side though, right now we have most of our matchup set. Going into the bracket, Oregon has won their pool. Minnesota going to pre-quarters. Pittsburgh winning their pool. Carlton going to winning their pool. Tufts and Colorado have finished. Tufts in second place and Colorado in third place going into pre-quarters. And Wisconsin, Central Florida and Cal are also in. Central Florida finishing second and Cal finishing third. Right now though, monitoring this game, very important. The magic number is four. If Ohio wins by four, they will tie Georgia Tech with point differential for the last ball spot in Pool A. If Georgia Tech can make, make the loss only by three points, they will be in. Ohio, if they can win by five, they will be in, and it's 11-8 right now, Ohio. The subtleties in a, in a tournament like Nationals are, are crazy. When things come down to point differential, it's not just about winning and losing, it's about how many points you score in a game. It, ma it makes every point important. You know, it, and you can set those goals in practice. You can say this point is important. Every point is important. And teams that have that mentality in practice throughout the whole season, especially teams that have a, an ultimate culture, know that. And that's why they end up being successful. It's been interesting, too, to see the format now with the strength bids over the last two years. Truly in the regular season, every point does matter. It impacts your ranking, and especially for trying to get bids for regions. We saw the Southwest get, and the women's get five bids this year. We saw the North Central and the men's get five bids this year. And the rankings are so close that one point could make all the difference in the world. 
Yeah, one turnover could make the difference between your entire season, and that's, and that's to me that just pushes the the level of the game higher. It it gives you incentive to be perfect as much as you can to always practice the right way and always stay focused. If, if anything, it teaches you that you you cannot have mental lapses if you are committed to performing at the highest level. And I think that's. Not necessarily that Ultimate has lacked, but I think with the old format, you know, truly nothing mattered until regionals. So you could really experiment with things. You could tell yourself this doesn't matter. But in the new format, which I love, you really have to play every point like it means something because it does. Humboldt stayed up 14 to 7 with a chance to break for the win. Looking upfield, the wind has picked up a little bit. at the line, Humboldt State is there. Oh, but caught by Iowa. Oh, picking it up, putting it out in front again. This one tipped. Iowa cannot come down with it. Receiver had a chance on the way down to the ground. Yeah, the wind really got a hold of both of those last two throws, just popping them up a little bit, giving the defense a chance to make the play. Quick score update in the men's side, 11 to nine. Ohio is up over Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has gotten a break back. That will be huge. Ohio will receive with a chance to make their lead three, but that would still put Georgia Tech into the pre-quarters. We talked about some teams here really shutting it down before pre-quarters, taking the rest. Unfortunately for Georgia Tech, a team that's really based around Nick Lance, he's played a lot of points today against Minnesota and Ohio. Could be a death now going into pre-quarters. You know, if Georgia Tech does make it to pre-quarters, I'd be very surprised if they came out of there. They've had to put everything into their games just to get to where they are, and they're, they're probably going to run into someone else who's, who's a more balanced team. And you never know. Nick Lance could carry them to a pre-quarters victory, but I think with the amount of points he's had to play just to get them there, I imagine he is going to be gassed. Yeah, unfortunately for them, they will run into their regional rival, Central Florida, who absolutely dominated them 15 to 8 at the in the regional semifinal game in the Southeast region. Central Florida is a much deeper team, although coming off a loss. The, the mindset is interesting for Georgia Tech and those teams. We always like to focus on the teams that are going to win the championship. But you know what? For a team like Humboldt State here, who's going to come out with a victory, this is their celebration. And Georgia Tech, their, their victory was getting here. Iowa going up for a disc, can't get there. And it's a fun attitude to take if you're a Humboldt State or you're a Georgia Tech. You can just go in there with a no holds barred, nothing to lose attitude and just, just throw all your high, powerful artillery at every single point and say, hey, we're giving it our best shot. We weren't even maybe supposed to be here, but let's just do it. Let's go for it. Surprises are always from Minnesota Duluth coming out of the men's division, having an incredible run through the North Central, making it over favored Iowa, although they did not have to face Iowa in order to get in. Disc is on the line. Yeah, you just got to get hot at the right times when it comes to late in the season. doesn't matter what the regular season did. If you can get hot at the right times. Speaking of picking at the right times, uh, we actually Number just Eliza wrapped Meyer. up Pool D. It looks like Tufts. The fourth now. seed in Pool D will take the number one spot there. They'll be moving on to quarters. Uh, second Number seed, we've got Iowa State. Sorry, the third seed originally, Taylor, Iowa State's going to finish up second in the pool, and then Cal. So it looks like Iowa State Iowa will Iowa face seven. off against, uh, I believe, Ohio State, and then Oregon facing off against Cal. Like we said, Tufts winning that pool is an amazing place for them to be. No one, I think, expected them to do that well. They're really comfortable sitting in quarters now. And then I think Oregon and Cal also were not expecting to be in pre-quarters. Both of those were number one seeds in their pool coming in. That's not the time that you want to get knocked out coming in as a one seed in your pool. Humboldt State has everything almost wrapped up, 14 to eight. Just needs to punch one more into the goal. Heidi's coming back on the field to put this one away. Is Heidi in her last year of eligibility or should she be 
coming back at all. I believe that Idy is in her last year of eligibility. Um, Humboldt, uh, opposed to some of their top players like Idy and Green, are a relatively young team. They've got a few great years ahead of them. Their coach, Matt, Kith Matt Kissman, has done an amazing job of developing this team. It was, you know, just years ago that this was a dream, and here they are on the national stage making noise against one of the top teams, Iowa. Idy finishing it off. Beautiful huck. Tenth assist of the game. Humboldt State, victory over Iowa. We'll have pre-quarters coming up, 5 p.m. local time. Yeah, we're going to have Oregon against Cal. Just like I was saying, the game that everyone's probably going to want to watch. The number one overall seed dropping a game in their pool. They're going to drop down to pre-quarters. Going to face off against someone who used to be in their region, Cal. Should be a great game in the pre-quarters. I'm excited for that one. Renew renewing regional rivalries. <laughs> well, thanks for joining Final in. Score, for Maya Ball Ziv and Mario O'Brien, this is Brian Jones signing Iowa off for eight. Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 Good college championships. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.